Hello, I'm Dr. Tyler Hendricks, and I welcome you to our discussion of God's purpose of creation. In this world, nothing exists without a purpose. All things are created beings, and their creator had some purpose for creating them. The creator's purpose becomes the purpose of the created entity. Thus, our purpose as human beings is also determined by the Creator God, His purpose for creating us. We're going to study our purpose, why we are here in light of God's purposes. And we can know of God's purpose of creation through the Bible. Its first book, Genesis, includes God's act of creation. Whenever God finished one stage of creation, He said, It is good. This means it makes me happy to look at this. At the last stage, the creation of human beings, God said, it is very good. So God felt a lot of joy. Why does a person feel joy? Joy comes when we are stimulated by someone or something who looks, acts, and thinks like we do. It comes when we are in familiar surroundings, like our home. It comes when we create something that reflects who we are. We, when we're stimulated by something that is like us, we feel joy. And then we love those object partners who give us joy. The intangible God is the same way. Actually, he has an uncontrollable urge to, to love object partners who look like him and look like her. In order to fulfill this, there has to be a tangible object. Without a substantial object partner, no one, not even God, can realize joy and feel love. Only with this object partner can God love and be happy. And God's object partner feels loved and is happy also. So that's why it's win-win. Lots of love, lots of happiness. That's why the creation began. Because happiness comes through the substantial object partner that returns joy to us. The intangible God created all this variety of the whole universe with this purpose for joy. Human beings are the children of God who resemble him completely. We are his companions of love. Then when does God feel the most happiness? It was when he created Adam and Eve, his children, when what he conceived as an idea was fulfilled. God created us according to his form and shape. In other words, God is the parents of humanity, our father and our mother. And just like our parents are so happy when, the new, when we were born, when a baby is born, so too God was joyful when his children were born. God is the happiest when we resemble his form and shape, when we realize his purposes for creating us. Then what are those purposes? God, our parents, created us and gave us blessings. In Genesis 1.28, we read, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. What does this mean? To be fruitful means for each of us to complete our individuality. It means to resemble God's divine nature and character. It means that centered on God's love, your mind and body must fulfill give and receive action with each other within you based on your conscience and your heart. You have to have God's wholeness and fulfill his and her values, God's values. In the Bible, they call Jesus the incarnation of God's word. He is recorded as the one who became one with God. And so Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Jesus 
gave tremendous joy and happiness to God. Now, to increase in number and fill the earth means for those who have fulfilled their individual maturity, like Jesus, to marry and have children and expand from a family into a tribe, nation, and world. This, in other words, means the completion of the family. In Genesis 1.27, it says that God created man in his image, male and female, he created them. This means that the harmonious unification of male and female is the image of God. Genesis 2.24 states that husband and wife are to become one flesh. And Jesus repeated this in, in Matthew 19. Men were born for women. Women were born for men. And Jesus said, what God has put together, let no man cast asunder. The oneness of male and female is the form of God. The husband can meet God through his wife, and the wife can meet God through her husband. Through the oneness of husband and wife, children are born. And through the birth of children, the couple becomes parents, and the children become brothers and sisters. Thus, the family comprises four loves, the love of parents, the love of husband and wife, the love of children, and the love of brother and sister. Today, you and I can build a heaven with these four kinds of love in our family. A community where this love spreads to your neighbors, a world where all people serve God as their parents and consider all humanity as their brothers and sisters, this is the ideal of God. This is the purpose for which God created us, right? In Genesis 1. Finally, God said, subdue the earth, have dominion over it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground. What does this mean? It means for human beings to care for all things with love. Now, there are environmentalists who see this verse and they say, mm, well, Christianity has had in the mindset of destroying nature. But to care for nature means for God's sons and daughters to help the creation fulfill its true nature. It means to reveal our object partner's value, the creation's value. It means to face all things with the heart of God. That is when natural things in the universe respond to us and bless us. It is an approach of loving nature, not destroying it. It means to develop and preserve nature with love, not to abuse and misuse and exploit the environment and the ecosystem. This is the extremely important insight of unification theory and Reverend Moon's own life, to take care of the creation, to take care of the oceans, to take care of all of God's creatures. It provides the basics of environmental ethics, the ecosystem theology. In unification theory, it says, after God created human beings, he gave us these three blessings. These are blessings that came to us by grace. But at the same time, they are our purpose and our responsibility. God is happiest when we fulfill these three blessings. The fulfillment of these three blessings is the perfect image of God. The way we can make God happy is through fulfilling these three blessings. The best example of this is everyone's parents. When their child is born, parents always hope for good health of the child's body and soul and hope that they will meet a good husband or wife and have a good life. Parents feel the most joy when their children fulfill these things. God's motive for creation was the exact same. He felt the exact same way. And he made them into these three blessings. This is the purpose of creation. And it's a roadmap for human life. A world where this purpose is fulfilled is heaven on earth. It's a one great family. 
in a world under God. The unification theory's ideal is to actualize heaven on earth right here, right now, here and now. Let us fulfill the three great blessings, live happy lives, and bless the world. But how can we have good reciprocal relationships? Sounds great, but how can we decide what has value and what doesn't? What is good? What's not good? These can be tough problems, and in our next session, we're going to address these questions. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you.